when we see you, we find strength to face the day. And in your presence, all our Well, good morning and welcome to our online service this Sunday, the 24th of September. I do hope you are having a great morning so far, whatever you're up to, <clears throat> however you're spending it, what you're doing, whether it's having a cup of tea in bed, watching on your phone, or whether you're watching on your computer or on your TV, or however you are joining us this morning, it's great to be able to gather and worship God with you together. We're beginning our generosity week this week. We're kicking off our generosity week, part of the Church of England's National Generosity Week campaign. And it runs all throughout this week and ends next Sunday. So we're starting to think about generosity and we'll finish by thinking about gratitude at the end as well. I wonder how generous you think God is to you. Well, hopefully today we can unpack that a bit. On our social media throughout the week, we will be sharing some podcasts that the Church of England have produced, helping us think about different aspects of God's generosity to us and how we can be generous in return. And of course, this comes down to things like how we are generous with our finances. We don't like to talk about money because it's vulgar, apparently, but money, uh, as the song goes, makes the world go round. Um, we all interact with money in certain ways. Some of us have more of it, some of us have less of it. But what we do with it and how it interacts with our hearts tells us a lot about where our treasure is, as the Bible tells us. Jesus said, the love of money is the root of all evil. And so I wonder how that root has been uh, growing and digging its way into the soil of your lives this week. Um, this month and this year? Are there places in your life where you need to root out the love of money? One of the best ways to do that is by giving the money away and we're always happy to receive it in donations. We'll start as we always do though with our opening acclamation and first song. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Let's sing together.
lofty mountain grandeur And hear the brook and feel the gentle breeze Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee How great thou art, how great him to begin our time with together reminding us how great God is always something important to keep in mind we come now to our confession where we say sorry to God for the ways in which we've fallen short God our father we are sorry for the times when we have used your gifts of creation carelessly and acted ungratefully father in your mercy forgive us and help us we enjoy the fruits of the harvest, but sometimes forget that you have given them to us. Father, in your mercy, forgive us and help us. We belong to a people who are full and satisfied, but ignore the cry of the hungry. Father, in your mercy, forgive us and help us. We store up goods for ourselves alone as if there were no God and no heaven. Father, in your mercy, Forgive us and help us. So may God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you and pardon you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in life eternal. Amen. We now have our reading from the Bible, which is read for us by Beverly. The Gospel reading is taken from Matthew 20, verses 1 to 16. For the kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out early in the morning to hire workers for his vineyard. He agreed to pay them a denarius for the day and sent them to his vineyard. 
About nine in the morning, he went out and saw others standing in the marketplace doing nothing. He told them, you also go and work in my vineyard, and I will pay you whatever is right. So they went. He went out again about noon and about three in the afternoon and did the same thing. About five in the afternoon, he went out and found others still standing around. He asked them, why have you been standing here all day long? Doing nothing. Because no one has hired us, they answered. He said to them, you also go and work in my vineyard. When the evening came, the owner of the vineyard said to his foreman, call the workers and pay them their wages beginning with the last one hired and going on to the first. The workers who were hired about five in the afternoon came in and each received a denarius. So when those came in who were hired first, they expected to receive more. But each one of them also received a denarius. When they received it, they began to grumble against the landowner. These who were hired last worked only one hour, they said, and you have made them equal to us who have borne the burden of the work and the heat of the day. But he answered one of them, I am not being unfair to you, friend. Didn't you agree to work for a denarius? Take your pay and go. I want to give the ones who were hired last the same as I gave you. Don't I have the right to do what I want with my own money? Or are you envious because I am generous? So the last will be first, and the first will be last. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Thank you, Beverly. I wonder what your reaction to the story is there. We have the uh, we have the a landowner hiring someone. As it was very commonplace. They would go out early in the morning uh, before dawn and hire someone to work in their fields. Um, they would go to the marketplace and there would be people standing around, labourers for hire, and you would. Uh, go to the marketplace and you would agree a price, um, which was usually a denarius, which was a day's labour. Um, you would agree a price and they would come back to your fields with you and work in your fields. So the landowner would have gone and uh, found the person in the marketplace, probably the fittest looking one, the one that looks like they get the most amount of work done uh, in the time of day. And they would have said, I'll pay you a denarius for a day's work on my on my vineyards. And so the, the labourer comes with them and goes and works on their vineyards. They know what they're getting. They're getting a day's pay, which is pretty generous. A day's pay for a day's labour. That's all right. It's the going rate. And so the labourer is working. Uh, and the story in the Bible tells us that the uh, vineyard owner looks out and uh, sees that there are more people uh, in the marketplace doing nothing. These people probably weren't the fittest ones, but they're the next level of fittest ones. If, if all the people who, all the landowners who need labourers have been there uh, at early in the morning to hire their workers, they would have chosen the fittest ones, the best ones, the most able ones. Um, maybe these ones are, are not quite as able. Maybe they're, they're approaching um, uh, middle age or something like that. Maybe they aren't as strong. Um, uh, and so these are like the grade B ones, probably. And so he goes and hires them and he says, I'll pay you a denarius for your work. Um, I'll pay you whatever is right, actually, is what he says. I'll pay you whatever is right. Uh, and if you haven't been chosen to work by this time, then you're probably just grateful for any sort of work um, because it's looking, if you hadn't been hired with the rest of the others, it's looking like you weren't going to get any labour, any work that day. So you wouldn't get any pay that day. So another bunch of labourers join them in the vineyard. Working hard is backbreaking work if you've ever worked in a vineyard, picking grapes, uh, picking weeds, all that kind of stuff. It's exhausting in the heat. And so the story goes on and it tells us about noon and at about three in the afternoon, he goes back and does the same thing. He goes to the marketplace and he finds more people who haven't got work. And so if the grade A's and the grade B's have been chosen at this point, we are left with the grade C's and the grade D's. People who are injured, who are elderly, who are unwell, who are known to be lazy, who are not the first choice or even the second choice. We're getting down to third and fourth choice here. And he says to them, I will pay you what is right. That's what he had said to the second ones. 
the working day would probably finish about eight o'clock in the afternoon, from dawn till dusk, a day's labour. And at about five in the afternoon, it tells us again, he goes out and finds others standing around and he asks them, why have you been standing here all day long doing nothing? Bit of a rhetorical question because of course he knows why they're standing around doing nothing because nobody's hired them. It's a bit of an awkward question. It, it's, you know, it's like um, uh, a, when a child goes up to someone in the supermarket and says, why are you so fat? Um, it's an awkward question. The answer's you know, not an easy one to say. I'm sure uh, commentators would say uh, these people haven't been hired because they'll be infirm, they'll be elderly, they'll be frail, they'll be weak, they'll be lazy, they will just not be very good at their job um, of, of labour. But still, they are hired. Uh, go and work in my vineyard. But they'd only be doing a couple of hours worth of work. It says, when evening came, between five o'clock and evening, there's not much time, only a couple of hours. When evening came, the vineyard, the owner of the vineyard said to his foreman, call the workers and pay them with their wages, beginning with the last ones hired and going to the first. So these people have only been working for about three hours, probably even less than that, uh, have been called to get their wages first before those who have been working since six o'clock in the morning. And they are paid a denarius. They're paid a day's labour. They're paid for a day's labour, the wages of a day's labour. The people who work three hours are paid a, the wages of a day's labour. The people who work six hours, who are hired uh, at three in the afternoon, have been paid a day's labour. The people who work nine hours, who are hired at noon, have been paid a day's labour. The people who have worked 12 hours, who are hired uh, at six o'clock in the morning, at the start of the day, were also paid a day's labour. Whether they did three, six, nine or twelve hours worth of work, they received the same amount. Now imagine if you were that first lot of labourers. You've been sweating and grafting out in the vineyard for twelve long, hot, sweaty hours. And you have been watching these other labourers come in and working alongside you but doing less. Uh, gradually getting worse and worse in terms of productivity and strength and ability. And you see the oldest, most frail, most lazy one getting paid a denarius, which was promised to you at the start of your day. So maybe you're imagining, oh, maybe I'll get paid more. Uh, maybe I will be paid, you know, four times the amount uh, because I've done four times the amount of work. But you realise that actually you're going to get paid one denarius. You're going to get paid the same. Like them, I bet you'd be pretty hacked off. You'd be pretty annoyed. It says, when they received it, this is the first work, as they began to grumble against the landowner, those who were hired last worked only one hour and said, you have made them equal to us who have borne the burden of the work and the heat of the day. We've done most of the work and it's been the hottest. But this is what the landowner says. I am not being unfair to you, friend. Didn't you agree to work for a denarius? Take your pay and go. They had agreed to work for the denarius. They knew what they were getting in for. They were being paid one day's worth of wages for one day's worth of labour. Take your pay and go. I want to give the one who was hired the last the same as I gave you. Don't I have the right to do what I want with my own money? Or are you envious because I am generous? You see, this isn't a story about unfair wages and the landowner paying the, uh, paying the first labourers less than the last labourers. He's paying exactly what he was supposed to to the first labourers, the first hired. Instead, he is being generous. He is providing in abundance to the last ones, the ones who probably weren't hired often, the ones who would have had the least, the ones who had often gone home without a pay packet, the ones who hadn't worked because of illness or frailty or laziness. He was being super generous to the second, third, fourth and fifth labourers, not stingy to the first labourers. He gave them what he had agreed and what they were owed. 
Jesus starts the story, the kingdom of heaven is like a landowner. This whole story is an illustration about what the kingdom of heaven is like, about what God is like. You see, we all imagine ourselves to be the ones who have been working out in the field the longest, who have been working hard in the vineyard the longest. The truth is we're the ones who are frail and lazy and elderly, who have been hired at the end of the day and are receiving the same amount as those who have been hired at the beginning of the day. You see, God's grace and generosity comes freely and equally to all of us. We receive the same amount of grace, an abundance, an overwhelming amount of grace. When we come to the Lord Jesus, when we come to him in faith and receive his forgiveness, those who come when they're very young don't get an extra blessing in heaven uh, than those who came on their deathbed. We all get heaven. We all receive the same reward. God is super abundantly generous to us as we come to him in our weakness, in our frailty, in our fallenness, in our disobedience, in our inability to see what he's doing. God is generous to us. He is super abundantly generous to us. He gives and gives and gives even when we don't deserve it. God provides for us when we need it, when we realise that there is nothing, we, we haven't been hired, we're left in the marketplace. We are the ones, we are the last labourers. We are the ones who are chosen at six o'clock in the afternoon, at five o'clock in the afternoon, only doing a few hours worth of work. And yet we still receive the blessing and the abundance of heaven. God isn't stingy. God is super abundantly generous to us. Amen. As a Let us pray for the God of glory in whom we live and move and have our being. We pray that the church may hold true to the teaching of Jesus. We pray for a spirit of humility to deflate all pomposity and arrogance. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray that all in positions of power, authority and influence in our world may recognise their calling to servanthood and never lose their identity with the needs and longings of those they serve. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray that all communities may look after one another, supporting the vulnerable, encouraging the timid, providing practical help for all who need it, and nurturing the young in a climate of trust. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all who have lost heart, through pain, suffering or sin, that God's redeeming power may work its wonders in the very darkest situations. In the moments of quiet, we name in our hearts those we know need your healing today. 
Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Hear us as we remember those who have died in the faith of Christ. May they know the joy of burdens laid down and new lasting life, transforming them through the eternal love of God. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. Can we draw all our prayers together in the words of the Lord's Prayer? Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. So as I mentioned, this week is Generosity Week and we'll be sharing a podcast every day this week to help us think about generosity. Um, and next Sunday, we will be thinking about how we respond in gratitude to God's generosity towards us. Do join us for that. For now, though, we finish with our final song.
And so we finish our time together with the blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you, turn his face towards you, shine his countenance upon you and give you his peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you, those you know and love. Amen. Do join us again next week for our online service or don't forget that we pray every evening here on Facebook at 7pm. Do join us for that as well. Bye for now.